Tonight, a secret spy program that targets American cell phones, Facebook's shorter and prettier privacy policy, and the odd story behind why the Reddit CEO may have resigned. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 215, for Thursday, November 13th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the Justice Department is collecting data from thousands of cell phones through fake communications towers deployed on airplanes in order to catch criminal suspects, but in the process, also collecting data from innocent Americans. This is according to anonymous sources. The U.S. Marshals Service program has been in place since 2007 and operates Cessna aircraft from at least five metropolitan airports with a flying range covering most of the U.S. population, according to people familiar with this program. The planes have devices that mimic cell towers of large telecommunications firms and trick cell phones into reporting unique registration information and then general location. A Justice Department official would neither confirm nor deny the existence of the program, but said that the Justice Department agencies comply with federal law. Sony has announced its new cloud-based TV streaming service, PlayStation View, today, which will open in beta by invite this month and have a commercial release in early 2015. The PlayStation View is a single interface for both live television programming and recorded streaming content. During the beta, the service will offer around 75 channels per market. That includes national and local broadcast networks like CBS, Fox, and NBC, and national cable-based networks like F FX, rather, Comedy Central, and the Discovery Channel. Users can also watch local sports through services like Fox Sports and Prime Ticket, although no word on pricing just yet. Rumors are putting it, you know, I've seen something around $80 per month, which doesn't sound like that big of a discount, but hey, we'll let Sony tell you. If you're a brand trying to reach 18 to 34 adults, as in the age range, which is actually a pretty tough one, I used to work in cable news, you better be on YouTube. That's according to a new report by Nielsen, which found that YouTube reaches more of that millennial demographic than any single cable TV network or even a social network like Facebook. Business Insider looked at some of the data a little bit more closely and found in its own report that not only is YouTube's audience among the youngest of any social network, but it also ranks as the social site with the third biggest penetration rate worldwide among web users at 22%. That's according to Global Web Index. The youngest indie demo gravitate towards music and comedy and how-to online videos on YouTube. And then 50 and older mostly watch use news, education, and also how-to videos. Everybody likes how-to videos. Some management shifts are happening over at online community Reddit. CEO Yishan Wong has resigned from his position after two and a half years, and Ellen Pao, Reddit's business and partnership strategist, will serve as the interim CEO. The company released this in a statement today. Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian will return to the company full-time as its executive chairman, and he'll also run marketing, strategy, and communications. Reddit advisor Sam Altman wrote in a blog post today that Wong's departure was related to a dispute over the location and lease of a new office for the company. Reddit was founded back in 2005 and has grown to nearly 174 million monthly active users. The company has also appointed Dan McComas, who leads Reddit's gift exchange program, as the company's senior vice president of product, which points to possible new revenue strategies ahead for the company. If you read the register today, you might have seen an article titled, Facebook will sell you to advertisers, and it's trying hard to hide that. We've got the author of that article, Ian Thompson, with us now. He's the tech news reporter over at the register. Hey, Ian. Hi there. All right, so Facebook released a draft of its new privacy policy, it gave everybody a chance to look at it. It's a lot shorter, which you'd think, well, that's maybe a good thing, right? They took out a lot of confusing you know, legal jargon. What's, what's, what's changed? Well, it, it is a lot shorter. I mean, it's about, depending on how you measure it, it's about two-thirds shorter uh, than the original policy. But if they wanted to make it really short, they should have just said, we're taking all your data except for these circumstances, because, I mean, that would make a much, much shorter document. Um, it, basically, what they've done is some, a lot of things haven't changed, and particularly the privacy 
stuff that they've put up now makes it a lot easier to manage certain settings. But hidden in amongst that is that they're doing, you're going to be using a lot more location data. They're going to be taking a lot more data from different markets. Um, and there does seem to be a slight disconnect in from what they're saying in the nice, easy to read privacy terms to the terms and conditions which are slightly denser. So, I mean, it's going to take going through this with a, a fine, you know, fine tooth comb. But basically, they're taking a lot of data and this legally covers them if anybody starts to put an objection up there. Facebook is known for changing privacy policies and then having this revolt. It's, it, it happens pretty much every time at, at this point. Why would the company give, it, give people a reason to once again point at it and say, well, wait a second, you're just taking more of our data when they know that that is the sort of thing that upsets users? Or do they think that actually writing something in easier to read language that's shorter is just going to fool people? Um, well, I think writing, writing easier to understand terms and conditions is a good move. But I think in this case, what they're doing is basically sending out a message that we're going to start monetizing this data across a much broader spectrum. This legally covers us for what we're doing. Um, and therefore, you should, you know, you can go through it. It's it's written in the kind of language that even my mother, you know, I use my mother as a, who's in her late 70s as a test case for this mm -hmm. sort of thing. It's written in the kind of language that she could understand. But if you actually look at the what it's saying, then it's basically saying there's a large amount of, of data which we're going to be taking. Now, you're totally right. Every time Facebook does this, users kick up a stink. And then usually it calms back down um, and they get away with it or they can change certain things. Uh, I think at the moment what they're going to be doing is monitoring that comments page that they've set up so you can write in about it and seeing what kind of a storm this comes. It's more of a toe in the water thing. Uh, and remember, there's seven days before this is set in stone anyway. So what are they going to be tracking? Uh, you know, Let's say this this goes through. What, are they, what data are they going to be taking of yours and mine that they're not currently taking? Um, they're going to be doing a lot more location stuff, particularly in countries outside the US. Uh, and this is related to a plan to start selling a lot more advertising that's, that's localized to particular regions. Um, we're also going to be seeing, I think, a lot more data taken, financial data taken and used because they're trying to put this buying function into Facebook, which is going to be very lucrative for them and presumably for the people that have the stuff that you're buying as and, well. And but when you say financial data, I mean, if I don't tell them what how much money is in my bank account, what, what what kind of data can they take from me? Oh, well, I mean, they're going to have to, if you're actually going to buy stuff online, then they're going to have to take some kind of financial data to pay for it. Um, so that's all going to oh, be Oh, I see, on so Facebook it's, itself. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Um, and then in terms of the, the, the amount of sort of actual individual user information, from my preliminary reading, reading of the case, and it's basically everything, um, pretty much, unless you specifically opt out and opt out of the advertising deal that's being, of the advertising uh, formats as well. So in some cases, you're actually going to have to do this on, the, on individual devices itself. So you, there is still the opt out, but it's getting trickier to do. Right. I mean, you could argue that, hey, as long as we have the option to opt out, then what's the problem? Of course, if you're not only, if not only pe people don't realize that, but you're sort of obfuscating the ways that you can do that, especially on multiple devices, I can see it being an issue down the road. Uh, you mentioned that Facebook is expanding the list of countries that they're going to sell targeted ads in. I suppose that's in an effort to monetize where they have areas of growth that, you know, the U.S. and the U.K., for example, are both, uh, you know, they, we had uh, penetration of Facebook early on, but our growth has slowed. Oh, yes. I mean, as the market's matured, and there's a limit to the number of people that will, you know, a certain subset of the population will never go on Facebook. They're just not interested. But in the US, UK, um, certainly Germany, I think, then you're seeing a plateauing of, of interest because there's a limit to, you know, how fast growth can see. I mean, Twitter's finding this out uh, in exactly the same way that, you know, once you get past that original growth spurt, there's a limit to the number of people who will sign on to your services. So what this is going to allow Facebook to do is go over to specific regional locales, um, which primarily I think Western Europe, um, Asia and, and, and uh, Australasia, and use the data that they've got to monetize their, you know, monetize their people because they do have shareholders now who need to return on their income or on their investment, sorry. Ian Thompson is the tech news reporter over at The Register. Thanks so much for joining us, Ian, and laying out a little always. bit more of why we should worry about the things that we do on Facebook, if we care about data and privacy. Before you go, let folks know where they can keep up with your work. 
uh, theregister.co.uk or personally, I'm Ian Thompson on Twitter. Excellent. Thanks so much, Ian. Okay, have a great day. You too. Coming up, the Senate might take up NSA reform sooner than previously thought. And hey, do you remember Underoos? If you do, we have some good news for you this holiday season. That's all I'm going to say for a few minutes. First, are you hiring? Hey, maybe you've got a small business and you're, you know, you need to hire a few people, but they've got to be the best people, right? Because if you hire the bad people, you know how that goes. You want to find the best candidates and you want to post your job to more than one place because you know you don't necessarily know what uh, sites your candidates are using. ZipRecruiter.com is your answer. You can post your job, one job to 50 job sites, more than that. Craigslist, LinkedIn, Twitter. All this is all time consuming if you have to do them individually one by one. This is all with a single click with ZipRecruiters. And you can find candidates in all sorts of cities or industries. You just post once and the qualified candidates start rolling in to ZipRecruiter's interface. That's where you can manage them all. You don't have to worry about emailing or calling or, or, or handling calls to your office. You screen your candidates, you rate them, and then you can hire the right person as fast as possible. If you're looking for a job, ZipRecruiter is great too. It can help you find a new employer as much as it helps the new employer fi find you. You have the newest job postings that are sent to your inbox every day so you can keep on top of them and, and make sure if there's the dream job, it's right there in your inbox. And it's good for uh, employers and potential candidates because you can learn about new postings really quickly and you get motivated candidates, right? If they, if they want the job, then uh, everybody wins. So find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses. Lots of businesses love ZipRecruiter for a reason. For a free four-day trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. And thanks to ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. We love you guys. On to a few more stories we are following today. The USA Freedom Act may reach a vote in the U.S. Senate as soon as next week, which pushes the surveillance reform bill ahead this year. Exiting Senate Majority Leader Senator Harry Reid filed a closure motion last night, which, which would press the bill forward, although whether it will receive the required 60 votes isn't yet certain. The USA Freedom Act proposes to end the government's collection of Americans' phone records and other controversial practices that have come to light over the last Last year or so. If passed, it may be voted on by the House of Representatives and signed into law by the end of the year. There's some work to be done, but it, it could happen. On the news of the closure motion, the Internet Association said that it is pleased with the vote that might, quote, end the government's bulk internet metadata collection and increase transparency around government surveillance practices. Amazon and book publisher Hachette have reached a deal in negotiations on ebook pricing that have been going on since May, which saw Amazon removing pre orders on Hachette titles, shipping them with delays, not providing discounts. It was, to, you know, they were kind of playing dirty. The new terms take place in early 2015. Hachette will set consumer prices of its ebooks. And the company gets better terms when it delivers lower prices for readers who use Amazon. As of now, pre-orders and discounts are already back in place for at least some Hachette titles. Good news for budding filmmakers who love Microsoft. The company has a new video editing app for Windows Phone and Windows Tablets called Movie Creator. It's currently in beta. Although for now, it only works on Lumia phones and the Lumia 2520 tablet and on Surface tablets running Windows 8.1. Movie Creator lets users combine videos and photos and music, even what the company calls cinemagraphs, into movies. The company also has a similar app for Windows Phone called Video Tuner, which is also available for Lumia devices only, but a Microsoft spokesperson tells VentureBeat, Video Tuner is great for editing single videos. Movie Creator is better for editing many videos and images and cinemagraphs together into longer professional looking videos. Movie Creator's launch does not affect Video Tuner. Okay, then. That's what they said. Now you just have options. Depending on how old you are, you have either never heard of underoos or spent your early years wearing them. They're kind of like a t-shirt underwear hybrid outfit. And I had a pair of R2-D2 underoos. So good news for those of us who, who yearn for the days of yesteryear with our Wonder Woman underoos. They've returned to stores for adults. Yes, in fact, everybody's favorite mall hangout hot topic is selling seven sets of these. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Batgirl, Harley Quinn, Captain America, He-Man, and Skeletor. Only $20 each or thereabouts. So I don't know. Happy holidays to all of us. 
Life just keeps getting better, people. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. We're going to end on a high note. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 if you enjoy watching. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv for any feedback with any feedback. And of course, if you'd like to watch live, we do the show every day at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. We also do a morning news show, Tech News, today. That'll be tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Hope you can catch that as well. I'm Sarah Lay. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.